So thank you everybody for being here for my presentation, Vibroacoustic as a fast diagnostic tool for onload tap changers. So the first part of this presentation shows how Vibroacoustic method is used as a fast diagnostic tool to easily detect mechanical problems in the tap changers online or offline before they create an outage. The second part will present a real case showing how New Brunswick Power has used this tool to adjust properly on WLTC. So 40 to 50% of failures on transformers come from tap changers and are of uh, mechanical origin. This uh, comes from Sigury. Four studies done by Hydro-Quebec, ESCOM, CAA, Australia, during 10 years on three continents, Sigre, IEEE, show exactly the same results. So for example, on the orange, you can see the Hydro-Quebec results shows this to 45% for the tap changers. What are the existing methods for OLTC testing? So this table shows a brief comparison between the five existing methods available today. Vibroacoustic method offers the widest detection spe spectrum. This table is from Seagray. For example, you can see that overheating and cocking is marked low for vibroacoustic, but is marked excellent for timing, transition, and arcing. So here we can see all the problems, linkage, timing, control delay, motor, brake, lubrication, contact alignment, arcing, overheating, contact wear transition. And here you have a mark showing if it's the, the technology is good or not. You can see the vibroacoustic, the motor, the dynamic resistance. All these tests are done by Zensol. And you have also dissolved gas analysis and the, and the thermography. So what kind of benefits what this is vibroacoustic testing bring to electric utilities? A total of 14 benefits have been identified. So first of all, applicable to any kind of tap changers applicable online or offline, quick, easy, and intuitive test similar to a oscilloscope. With vibro and current combined, you are able to detect a large range of potential problems. It gives you a better understanding on how the tap changers works. Thanks to this understanding, we can detect problems at earlier stage. Excellent in terms of timing and mechanical adjustment. Easy tool to detect arcing contact problems, online or only. Powerful software analysis thanks to Hydro-Quebec envelopes. I could show you how. High sampling time, unlimited recording time unique in the market. Excellent tool to help the user to decide which OLTCs are due for a maintenance operation. In testing OLTCs before and after maintenance, this tool can be used for quality control. And in testing year after year, trending analysis becomes easy and allows reduction of maintenance interventions. And of course, our goal is the reduction of transformer failures. So here, the uh, you have a resistive OLTC type diverter switch operation sequence moving from tap three to tap four. And typically the transition of the diverter switch is done in only 50 milliseconds to avoid overheating the resistance. So we are able to listen all the impacts of the mechanism during a step up or step down operation. And the motor operates between two and 12 seconds. Here you, you can see so how the diverter switch is moving. The motor drive mechanism, this motor allows the tap changer to move from a position to another. And in the recording and analyzing the EC or DC current motor during the step up or step down operation, we're able to know if the mechanism are forcing or not. So the motor current allows, allows us to also to start and stop the recording. Diagnostic principle. Each operation of an onload tap changer 
pro produces a specific vibroacoustic wave pattern. We call this a signature or fingerprint. With a vibroacoustic, which is in fact an accelerometer, we can record the signal the same way a oscilloscope picks up a person's heartbeat. A stable OLTC always shows consistent signatures. Any degradation of the OLTC induces changes in the signature. So how we do this? So for of course we need a, an instrument, and the first parameter that we have to be to take care of is the sampling time, and the sampling time is an important uh, parameter to keep in mind. So we use ten microseconds usually sampling frequency, so which is a sampling frequency at one hundred kilohertz. And here we have an example of good and bad recording vibration signals. The, the, if we take a simple ball bouncing on a plate and we record it at 10 microseconds for the sampling time, 100 microseconds, which is good for timing motion, but not for vibration. And just to show the, the effect at 500 uh, microseconds. So in the next slide, you are going to see the zoom of the first part of the signal. So this is what we get for the 10 microseconds. We we have a clean a signal, very clean, and so we can see that it's not broken. At 100 microseconds, so the vibroacoustic vibro is uh, really broken. So after it's hard to interpret this signal. And at 500 microseconds, you, you see absolutely nothing. It's just uh, some points. So what we need, we need, of course, uh, an EC or DC current clamp, one accelerometer in general, we, we can use the three, the recording system with the software, and here are the, the specifications of this uh, recording system, which is the 16 bits is not, uh, it's is a must. And uh, started and stopped by the current motor. Here you have a typical uh, example of connections. So here you have the transformer where the, the, the accelerometer has been installed. We use in general a glue with a tap base, then the accelerometer. Here it's the micro dot cable. And for the current, it's exactly the same, but of course we look for the motor to uh, where the motor drive is and uh, here it's uh, typically with the portable system, and we have exactly the same, the same thing with the standalone uh, monitoring system. Here it's uh, usually we need to uh, to choose uh, like uh, where to install our accelerometer. You in you can see this in our website, so we have some videos. We use the glue to um, be able to uh, um, to stick the this uh, piece of metal that we call uh, tap base. After we screw the accelerometers on the, the side of the transformer, here you can see it on the bottom because the tap the tap changers is on the side and the, the bottom is uh, perfect uh, to. Uh, uh, for the accelerometers to be installed and also for the security for the online monitoring it's absolutely uh, very nice also here we have some examples of uh, installation of the uh, accelerometers and the best location is uh, just think uh, with your heart if you have your restoscope and you want to uh, to uh, listen to your heart, what you are going to do is so you try to put your stethoscope uh, as close as possible uh, to your heart. You are not going to put it in the in your hand, for example. Yes, of course, you will have your heartbeat, but uh, the amplitude will be really uh, less. Here it's some examples for the motor current. So it's uh, very simple. You you look for a. Uh, wires of for the uh, for the motor current you have to be careful sometimes because 
uh, like we have some uh, wires from the brake. So uh, sometimes it could take uh, some uh, uh, time, in fact, to uh, identify exactly the the motor current. Here, it's if it's online, it's one tap up and one tap down. If it's offline, we test all the taps. So hydro Quebec envelope. So uh, here you can see on the left the raw data the for a typically an accelerometer. So this is a vibroacoustic signal, and uh, uh, in blue it's the raw data, and in uh, red it's what we call the envelope. So and the, the envelope we here you can see the low frequency envelope and the high frequency envelope of the accelerometer, and here is the envelope of the motor current. So why the envelope? It's simplify the signal, get the shape of the signal, and we focus on valuable impacts only and easy to analyze and it's easy to compare. So every tap changer has a specific sequence of operation that can be identified in the envelopes. So depending on the model of WLTC, Different signatures can be obtained, which are characterized by specific operation length, number of peaks, shape of the current, amplitude of the impacts, and so on. And the sequence of operations associated with OLTC is described in the operation guide provided by the OLTC manufacturer. Our goal is simply to uh, understand when the startup has occurred, when we get the changeover switch, when we have the diverter switch, uh, uh, transition. The uh, if we have some contactor, we will listen it. The selector switch gen generally it's a silence, and here the, here we have two operation for the diverter switch. One here and another one in, and then after you have the breaking part at the end, and after you have the post uh, operation. So in fact, all our analysis will be done on the startup, on the diverter switch and on the breaking part. So typically a diagnosis can be made in 15 minutes for an online test and one hour for an offline test. Here you can see the, the EC motor current of the tap changer. Here you can see the, the vibration, so, so the impact of the transition. And from this, uh, these raw data, we get the the envelopes and the envelope of the current. So here we use this on the on-site quick analysis. We have immediately produced by the software uh, Excel reports. And here in some blue dark, you get some alarms that you have to be, you well, not an alarm, but it's... Uh, we have noticed that it's a different from the from the uh, the uh, average of the values that we have fixed. And offsite and offsite deep analysis. So we use the Excel reports, the contact squares, the envelopes. We have some diagnostic the diagnostic cards, and we have also a database for the references uh, signatures. So here you have an example of wear of contacts. Before the intervention, more than 60% of difference between the high and low frequency that you can see here. This is the before maintenance. So look at the, the roles of these uh, uh, contacts. Now this is a brand new contacts. After the intervention, less than 20% difference between the high and low frequency. So in fact, here we just proved that the envelopes could be a good tool to uh, check the contact work. Here it's an example of poor lubrication, high torque. Here in general, this part of the current must be flat. And when we have here a high value, the, this is means it's an unusual shape of the motor current. So uh, the, the motor is forcing. Here it's an example of uh, asynchronism. Here you have the motor current, which is clean. 
And here, what is not normal, it's that the this impact comes at the end of the motor current. So this test results show an example of a synchronism of the switching operation. In normal condition, the switching operation should occur before the current stops flowing in the motor. In the case illustrated on the left, the switching operation signal is delayed by 120 milliseconds after the end of the current envelope. So as it can be easily observed, this kind of issue doesn't require the use of a reference signature and the asynchronism can be detected immediately. So the intervention in this case consisted in an in uncoupling the drive motor and adjusting it so that the switching operation could occur before the motor current drop. The figure on the right represents the normal condition of the mechanism after the repair. So here you have an example of arcing contact. In this picture, an example of arcing contact is presented. Two tests have been performed on the tap number 10 of the same OLTC. One test has been performed offline, the red curve, and the other one online, the black curve here on the top. By comparing the two signatures, a big difference in the maximum amplitudes can be easily observed. In fact, the maximum amplitude of the offline test is 8G, while the, other, while the one of the online test is 35G. And the image on the right shows the superposition of the two signatures through which is possible to observe the presence of an arcing and of an the extra peak in the online test. And this extra peak represents the arcing contact phenomenon. Here you can see clearly that. Uh, and the, in general, in this, you, you can suspect that you have like a hole uh, in your contact. So, so the so the protection of your contact has been damaged. So here it's an example of impacts and timing association. So here it's a zoom on the on the envelope uh, of the vibra acoustic. And here is the transition given by the manufacturer, which is in this case a Renhausen. And uh, this uh, in fact is uh, is um, uh, is work uh, very hard and which has been simplified by the dynamic resistance measurement uh, correlation that I will show you in the next in the next slides. Here it's you have an example of abnormal inrush current. Here you have compression of the inrush currents between two transformers same type. Here the inrush in is not happening. In fact, the current is delayed. The, the inrush current has disappeared and is delayed. And this uh, has provoked uh, like always like uh, the breaker to uh, uh, operate. And uh, it was just a bad uh, um, adjustment of the control cabinet in the, in the, of a, uh, really in the control cabinet. And here you can see an abnormal current forcing current. Here you can see here with a, on top of this like a, an oscillation. Here you have some current analysis done in 2014, 16 and 23. Here you, you have like the envelope and, the, and we don't understand why in, the, in this case, in 2016, and you compare to 2014, the inrush has disappeared. Here you have also others analysis done in 2014, 2014, 16, 16. And here it's, uh, it typically shows that they have not taken exactly the same point to record the, the current, as I told you, you have to be careful when you record your uh, your uh, motor current. And here it's uh, the uh, uh, record uh, recording done in 2023 and uh, at a different uh, location for the motor current. And here you can see some brake analysis. <clears throat> 
that we can analyze very uh, carefully. And of course, you must know how the mechanism work. So the challenge is how to facilitate the compression of vibroacoustic signature. Several mechanisms are operating at the same time. So one way to address this challenge is to analyze simultaneously three recording, the vibration, the dynamic resistance, and the motor current and the tap changer in action. So what we need, we need as a the, the top four, uh, an accessory box, which is the tap DRM. And this is uh, the connection done uh, typically. And of course, the transformer is offline. So this is a typical uh, dynamic resistance uh, measurement uh, recording. So and uh, understanding. So here you 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 can see the uh, tap changer moving. So I go back. So just so so the impact is is one. The is done happens when the rolls come here. You see. So this is typically the dynamic uh, resistance on EBB UZ ERN. So this is what we get. So we get the, on the first curve we have the dynamic uh, resistance, the vibration and the motor current here. So, and you, we can identify clearly where the, the, when the impact happens and when the dynamic resistance uh, is, uh, is moving. So the, 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 goal, the goal of this uh, test is in fact to understand the vibroacoustic. So next time when you are on, online, you can, you, of course, you cannot do your DRM. So you just use your vibroacoustic and you know exactly before with this knowledge what all these impacts mean. So this is typically here. Uh, uh, this test has been done in uh, with the uh, IREC and uh, in the Hydro Quebec, and with a high speed uh, camera. So we have recorded the the uh, how the tap changer is moving. Of of course, the the oil was removed, but it gives at least a good understanding on how all this work together. So here you you can see the impact. So uh, according to the diary. So here are some examples of uh, recording for different OLTC with the top four plus and its uh, accessories. So here we have some examples. Here this is the setup: the top DRM, top four plus the current, the motor current, the accelerometers, and uh, connected to the transformer. And this is uh, the like on the first curve here, you can see the motor current, the accelerometer, and uh, here you have the current, the voltage, and here the diameter, the dynamic resistance is calculated. So you, you can easily know exactly how the the resistance is uh, changing from uh, uh, when the transition is happening. So this is a normal sequence after all the variations and timing. So here, the, this special test has been done to look at the, uh, that we wanted to prove that the voltage and the current were not interrupted. So here you, you have the vibroacoustic motor current, and here it's different taps uh, uh, recorded. And uh, so here we have proved that we, we, have, we are moving from 10 to, to 8, and here from seven, uh, 15 to 70. And uh, here, so we can, uh, visualize the dynamic resistance 
the the vibra acoustic and the currents at the same time just uh, to show some example and here is the zoom of this this part the the the, the transition so we know exactly so the correlation after is easy So, and uh, here we have an example of action plan to elaborate uh, a predictive maintenance for transformers with OLTC. So step one, establish your transformers list with OLTC to monitor. Step two, for each transformer, do a complete test to get a reference, all taps offline. Tab for plus, tab DRM used. We have developed a Zansol checklist. So, so this way, we miss nothing. Step three, we produce a complete report analysis for each transformer, uh, OLTC transformer. Use the Zensel template report analysis. And step four, according to these diagnostic results, we establish your maintenance plan for each transformer. And after, you can just do a periodic vibroacoustic test online or offline. So here, as I told you, the this is the second presentation. So me, I just a presenter of uh, Christian Noel, who is a professional engineer in uh, New Brunswick Power. And uh, this uh, presentation has been done in 2023 and uh, January 10th. So this is uh, uh, in Caracat uh, Transformer 1, LTC maintenance. Vibra acoustic and DRM performed before and after maintenance. And this maintenance was performed of our Caracat transformer. This transformer is equipped with a Renhausen type tap changer. So in general, there are two types of uh, tap changer, compartment or box type in tank and in tank. In our cases, in our case, this LTC is an in tank design. Although most of our in-tank design LTCs are three separate phase models, we do have a few delta configuration. A delta configuration has a cylinder with two, two, uh, two diverters, and the other is a regular cylinder with a single diverter. So uh, timing between the uh, and the motor drive and diverter assemblies is adjusted using the shaft connections between them. So here you, you can see it's a not common uh, tap changer, but it's, um, <laughs> it's the way it's done. So here in this case, we install two vibroacoustic sensors, two on separate walls near the diverters and located about 18 inch inches from the cover. In fact, they, you, you need only one, but they were not sure. So they have used two. And, uh, the, and as you can see, the, the two will show exactly the same results, the two accelerometers. So generally tap operation of this type of tap changer will include the following steps. One of the selector contact is leaving the previous type. Position, stationary contact. This moving selector contact is then connecting to the next tap stationary contact. The energy in the diverter energy accumulator is released to switch the load current to the next tap connections. And then on this graph, we are seeing the sound made by each operation, made being captured by both vibroacoustic sensors and also the MU motor current captured by the EC current uh, EC clamp. So when adding the DRM information for the previous graph, we can then confirm when exactly the diverters are switching the current. It helps understand the information provided by Vicrotix sensor. So here you can see like the, the, the DRM uh, is, uh, is correlated to this vibroacoustic uh, signal. So tap up operation before maintenance, the results shown are for before the maintenance, we're seeing all three phases side by side. And from this information, we can tell that A phase is not operating in sync with the B and C phase. A, uh, a phase 
is likely the single diverter where BNC phases are associated with the double diverter cylinder. So here you, you, you can see the A phase, like which comes, uh, the, the impact is uh, associated to this uh, vibroacoustic signal. But for the, the BNC, you, you, you can see that the impact is associated here. So tap up and our test plan calls for testing all the tap transition going up and also black, uh, back down. In this up operation, we are seeing that A phase is operating earlier than B and C. It's exactly what we have seen in, in the previous slide. So tap down, but in the down operation, we are not only seeing that A phase is operating slightly later than the other two phases. In fact, A phase is operation after the motor current is interrupted. The timing of this diverter is at the limit where it could possibly not operate in during a down operation. This would result in a phase being on a different tap than the other two phases. Tap down, but the big improvement can be seen on the down operation where a phase is operating well within the runtime of the motor now. This aligns with what was seen for BNC phase. So now it's before maintenance. So just a review, just to review the before maintenance reading, showing the difference in timing between A phase and the other two phases. So here it's seen clearly. And tap up after maintenance, after maintenance. So now everything is aligned. The after maintenance results now indicate the timing between all three phases is now better adjusted and the selector and diverter operations are now more in synchronization. I'm not showing the down operation, but the timing was the same at the up operation down on this slide. So summary, so Zansal tap four can give good indication on the timing between diverters. When time allows, it can be used before and after maintenance to validate the LTC is operating properly after our intervention. As we're getting more experience with the information provided by the top four, we could use offline acoustic measurements to focus prioritized maintenance on specific units. It's the kind of benefits I, uh, I told you in the beginning. So, Randy? Great. Great presentation. Good. Thank you, As Randy. Always. Yeah, very good. Okay, we do have a few questions. Uh, is there a database for vibroacoustic studies of tap changers from different brands? Or is there some standard with a compendium of typical cases? Well, in fact, uh, we are building this uh, reference database, but of course it's a proprietary database. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's a big, big, uh, big work. Sure. And, and if I'm going to put uh, Fuad's uh, email address into the chat here, and let me find that right now. And you can talk to him about this offline. Okay. Next one. Uh, what's the difference between types of tap changers? And is there a difference in the construction and operation of different tap changers? Well, in fact, um, I have to precise me, I am like a, a, a PhD a doctor in uh, recording systems in, uh, in electronics. So, but I can tell you one thing. It's that uh, when we have like uh, uh, tap changers, uh, designed like uh, like vacuum tap uh, changers we are going to use a vibroacoustic uh, an accelerometer of 10g in 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 fact we have so many uh, uh, different uh, tap changers that we as as a, a specialist on recording systems we just interest in how we can put our um our accelerometer 
only you see uh, me you are asking me how many kinds of humans uh, uh, exist in the in the in the earth and i say look i'm just i'm just a manufacturer of cytoscope that's it <laughs> so so me uh, as soon as i get a noise of a tap changer i i put my cytoscope and try to record this and then after thanks to the report that we have developed we uh, try to we 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 help we force the the how do you say the responsible of the transformer of the tap changer to understand how the, his tap changer is built and how it's designed i i, I hope my my question is <laughs> It's good. Uh, I hope my answer is uh, is clear. It's a good answer. Okay, next question. What is the percentage of uh, transformer failures related to tap changer failures? The only numbers I know is uh, are the numbers that I have given to you in the beginning. Is that uh, that fifty percent of the uh, failures comes from the tap changers? That I have no other numbers right. on my knowledge. So it's considerable. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay, great. And that's it for the questions. Thank you very much, uh, Fouad. Good presentation. Thank you, everyone, for your for your questions. Uh, as I mentioned in the chat a while ago, next week we will send an email to all of you actually all of the people who registered for this live online transformer forum. And we will give you links to the individual videos because we recorded these presentations and there'll be videos available and you can uh, watch them at your leisure and refer to them. We'll also put links in there to the presentations to download the PDFs in case uh, you people could download from, from Zoom. So thank you very much uh, for, the, uh, for your attention and your attendance today. I appreciate it. The next one we have coming up is at the end of March, uh, March the 25th on electrical substation um, testing and maintenance. So we'll see you all then, I hope. And uh, thank you much for attending and have a good day. Fouad, if you want to hang around, I can have a chat with you for a okay. while. All right. Okay. You want yeah. to chat with me. So thanks very much, everybody else. That's great. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thanks.